Hi, Alyssa. Let me introduce myself. This is Lisa Davies, and I'm the new instructor for the Grade 11 course. I'm looking at your Unit 3 test, and I thought I would just make you a video to go over the um, corrections. I know your previous teacher was uh, marking them and scanning them and sending them back to you, and I don't have a scanner here at home, so this is the easiest way for me to do it. For question 1a, you did that correctly, you factored it, and it turned out to be a perfect square. And so that's great because we already have this written in vertex form. But remember that vertex form is, um, there's two ways that they, they state it. Um, some textbooks and things like that, uh, teachers will use h and k for the vertex, others will use p and q. Either way, the numbers that you find in those spaces will tell you the coordinates of the vertex. So if you end up with an equation in this form, there's obviously nothing added on at the end. So we would put in a plus zero, and that would already give us the vertex of minus, or uh, sorry, positive one and zero. So you should have gotten the same thing. You didn't need to do this uh, over here, this section. But you should have gotten the same thing for the vertex. And the reason that you didn't is that negative 5 times 1 squared is negative 5. So negative 5 plus 10 minus 5 should have given you 0 here. And that way you would have had the same vertex of positive 1, 0 for that function. When you're finding the zeros for the function, you already had it in factored form up here. So all you have to do is set y equal to 0 and solve for x. And so um, the zeros in this case are both x equals 1. So this one is going to have just one point of intersection on the x-axis. Quadratic formula will always work also, but here, um, you've had a problem with the signs, and you should have ended up with 10 squared minus 100 equals 0 there. Um, and that would have indicated that you should only have 1, 0, not 2 uh, for this function. Um, all right. So the axis of symmetry is right, that's the same as, as the vertex, and the direction of opening is down, so that's correct as well. And uh, that's from the negative a in front, okay? So the domain and the range, um, x is any real number. And for the uh, range, um, you've got y is less than or equal to 10, but this uh, parabola will actually open down from the vertex of 1, 0, and so you're, uh, oh, I missed the, the axis just a little bit there with my stylus, but um, this point should be 1, 0. So your max y value is actually 0, y is less than or equal to 0 for your range. Okay, so for page 2, sorry, the picture is a little bit blurry, but that's okay, you've done everything correctly uh, here and here. And good job finding the inverse. People usually find that kind of hard. Um, one thing that you should keep in mind is that the uh, inverse, because we started with a parabola, the inverse is always the reflection in the line y equals x, this line here. And so what it does is it turns the parabola sideways. And so when we find the inverse, we should always restrict the domain or the range so that the function is an inverse. Uh, I'm sorry, so that the inverse is a function. <laughs> Too early in the morning for me. So using the vertical line test, you can see that the inverse is not a function. We're going to hit it twice. And so we need to restrict so that we either get the positive part of that curve or the bottom part of this curve in order to keep the inverse a function. Great work on page three. Everything looks good here. Your work with radicals. I like your mathematical form. And uh, same thing with the question five. You did a great job of solving that. And I like that you have included a word answer to the word problem. That should be there all the time. And a lot of people forget to do that. Good job. 
Okay, great work on uh, number six. That's great. Um, one little thing here just for number seven. If you're going to refer to points, then you need to write points for your, uh, for your answers. Okay, so I think what you have found here is the x value of the two points where you're going to intersect, where the parabola is going to intersect the line. Um, those are only points if you have y values along with them. And so you need to calculate the y values and write these two as ordered pairs rather than single values. Good job on question eight. Excellent work on number nine as well. That's a perfect solution there. You've done everything correctly. That's great. And I think that brings us to the end of your test. So overall, you're showing really excellent understanding on, I think, kind of a difficult unit. Um, some of the topics in here uh, give students some, some trouble. It takes a little bit of work to make sure that you really have a good understanding of this. But it's so important uh, for the grade 12 functions course that you have a really, really strong understanding of this stuff. And I think you do. So, so excellent work.